This conference will now be recorded. So all the good characteristics of requirement can be it should be like unambiguous. That means not confused. Should be testable, clear. That is concise, test, simple, precise. That should be correct, understandable, feasible, independent, blah blah blah. Consistent, no redundant, complete, etc. Now what you need to do is you have to identify examples for all of this. What is an ambiguous requirement? What could be the statement for it? Testable requirement, how it can be. Prepare that and submit to me. And we'll move on to the next topic that is our identifying the stakeholders. So stakeholders, there can be any number of stakeholders for a project. Our interest is to understand with whom we might have to interact. Right? So we might want to interact. So that's when we will be getting our maybe our requirements or maybe we might have to interact with the stakeholders for story, working with the stories, whatever it may be. Right. So for every activity that we do, whatever that activity we do, we will have corresponding stakeholders associated with it. For example, if you would like to elicit the requirements or if you would like to understand about the business needs, we will have business stakeholders. If your stories are ready, you would like, you would like to take it for refinements or grooming. Then we'll have development team members. For UAT, kind of a testing activity, you'll have the end users, again, from business side. So whatever activity you do, there'll be corresponding stakeholder associated with it. So we'd like to understand who are all our stakeholders that we need to interact. Some of the stakeholders, standard stakeholders, can be got from, we can take it from project plan such as business analyst, customer, domain subject matter expert, end user. So all these, are, all these can be various stakeholders from maybe from business side, sometimes maybe from IT side, sometimes they might be external stakeholders as well. You yourself, and if there is any business analyst team, for example, two, three people more, all of you will be considered as stakeholders. So we are four people, four BAs here in our project. So four of us are stakeholders for the product. Customer who is giving the project to you will also be stakeholder. Sometimes customer's customer can also be your stakeholder. Domain subject matter expert who has got knowledge in the particular domain. Maybe we can say in the industry you might be working for several years in that industry or in that particular company and then end user end user can be anybody it might be sometimes business users who might be working for the particular organization and software is meant for the internal purpose sometimes you might be the use end users might be external such as end users like us for a major application We are the end users, we don't belong to Amazon business or we, neither we belong to that, nor we belong to Amazon IT. <clears throat> so end users can be external stakeholders as well. Implementation subject matter expert, who can help you in implementing the application? It can be from IT or can be from business side. Even the operational stakeholders, operational support can also be from business side probably. Project manager, you will have your own project manager and you will have project manager from business side too. So you'll have both sides project managers. Regulators who can be generally external stakeholders like quality uh, or the quality control people or other some other compliance related people, HIPAA compliance, something like 
so they can be external or sometimes they can be internal sometimes they can be business stakeholders so they can be it and belonging to it company or they might be from business or they can be external to sponsor the person who funds the project so he will be from business side so business stakeholder suppliers can be external stakeholders who might supply software hardware or whatever is required and tester tester can be your it team members you yourself can be a tester there or uat end users will be participating from business side for conducting the uat so they can be business stakeholders sometimes you might want to outsource the testing as well you don't want to do it by yourself you might want to outsource it in that case again they can be external stakeholders so like this you'll have various stakeholders you have to identify who are all the names designations and all we'll discuss more about analyzing these stakeholders and then understanding how to handle them all as a part of our stakeholder management session for now just understand that we need to identify and list out all the stakeholders so that we can proceed further any questions here in identifying the stakeholders so far thank you all right so we would like to understand business needs we would like to check with the stakeholders that what are all their business needs what is the need by the way quick revision what is the need What is the need? Problem or problem or opportunity? Opportunity to be addressed. Uh, yeah, to be addressed to be correct to be addressed. So when I say business need, business might have certain problems or they might have few ambitions or goals to achieve. So we would like to understand. why they would like to have this project what is the reason behind that what business problem it is trying to solve what are the limitations of the current situation what's wrong with the current system what happens if we don't see the opportunity now when we want to understand about their problem or opportunity that they are pursuing we want to understand why this project how this project is relevant to them that means how it is going to help them what sort of problem it is trying to solve that why they didn't write what happened to their existing things why they are not sufficient what is wrong with it and what will be the damage that might occur if we don't deal with this project if we don't bring this project what might go wrong to what extent we would like to understand all of this thereby we will be clear with what business problem is or otherwise what they would like to achieve if you think is it something new or we are we aware of this kind of approach for example you might have recently purchased a phone for maybe one instrument or item toy for your kid or maybe you might have purchased a phone for your wife or husband spouse or maybe for your brother who sorry it might be now within a week if they ask you if they inform you that they would like to replace that or they would like to exchange or they would like to buy another one what sort of questions you might ask them first of all ask what is the problem with this one are you not satisfied it's not functioning or like i'm going to set sort of sort of question uh, what i'm like in this kinds of things correct why you would like to ask that one because you would like to assess if that change is needed or not if you would like to exchange or you want to buy another one is it really required you would like to understand that first in order to conclude that first you would like to understand what sort of challenges they are facing or are they under impression that this is not enough where you can explain them and then maybe probably they might not explore a few options you might want to explore and then tell them that this is there needless to change it thereby even you can avoid wastage of money too there might not be any necessity of going for new one 
just because they are aware not aware of one particular functionality they might have felt this is not helping <clears throat> so as a ba it's our responsibility to recommend them whatever they have or what they would like to have it will be needless to worry about much about losing the business there you might feel one of the learners has said <clears throat> if you start recommending this way saying that okay it is not required there is something which we can adjust then we'll be losing the project right one of the learner said if you recommend that way we'll be losing the project should we do it as a ba it's we will be treated as a trusted advisors they trust us they trust us business trusts us whatever we say they follow we can't take advantage as per our role we have to give them we have to present all the facts let them decide you explain this is not required because of these reasons let them decide if they want to still go ahead and we will help him help them if they feel that okay if they realize that okay it's really required not required let's stop it then they might come to you then tell me how can we improve something we will be treated as trusted advisors needless to worry about the project losing the project or something it never happens that way what we need to do is we have to genuinely understand what the problem is if you feel that for that one software is not the solution there is something else you are supposed to suggest that you are supposed to recommend it should not stop yourself there that's what role is about okay now if you observe the questions here the one which we were discussing about the exchanging phone or instrument or dress or toy or whatever it might be and if you observe the same questions here can you read through this and see the relevancy what are we trying to do here we are trying to understand the same thing what is the problem what is the problem why you are unable to understand why you are unable to use it how is it not helping you right same thing we would like to understand the same thing we would like to understand what sort of challenge it is causing why it is troubling them why they are looking for replacement okay same thing we are applying for business here so again this is also one of the natural way of thinking that we have with us so i'm just showing you this that you have that business analyst abilities in you we have been applying it for our activities personal just we need to apply it for business that's it so needless to worry that we are learning something new and you don't have any experience you have good experience as a ba a little bit of practice orientation is what is needed that you can get it through practice all right so in this way we have to analyze we have to understand the needs of the business needs are again problems we are discussing so how to ask the questions or what sort of things we have to take care of what we should do what we should not do when we are identifying the needs let's try to understand that we should in general for example if i ask you i am suffering from headache what is my need and i am suffering from headache what is my need medicine medicine again is medicine an opportunity or problem opportunity how if i use medicine i'm gonna reduce my pain yes when i'm suffering from headache how that medicine has become opportunity i have headache headache is my problem to be addressed not medicine to be addressed right headache is the problem that's my need getting headache Solution, yes, medicine can be your solution, but not sure. Are you sure why I'm suffering from headache? Oh no. Then this is the human tendency. Nothing wrong with it. This is the very human tendency because we are BAs. 
we should limit ourselves from entering into this particular mode there always there is a possibility whenever we would like to discuss about the problem we would like to refer it with solution first that we should avoid when we are understanding the needs otherwise what happens discussion might revolve around the solution then understanding the problem understanding the root cause of it why it has come always remember whenever you understand root cause of the problem solutions will be clear for you evident for you needless to struggle much i might be might not be having sleep if you understand that needless to give a try with the medicine we won't even recommend it this helps everywhere professional or personal everywhere whenever there is a problem first try to understand the problem clearly what is happening why is it happening get deeper into the roots so once you reach the root solutions will be obviously clear for you very very clearly you can understand what can be the appropriate solution nothing to worry much about you need less to spend more efforts there always avoid leading questions especially when you are understanding the business needs that means don't present any solutions at the same time should not be very dumb like an order taker who doesn't question you whatever you ask okay i'll get it for you is it available yes available i'll get it for you should not be that way <clears throat> you should have understanding about why they are actually requesting for something or what they are actually following why they are doing it so what sort of things we have to provide to them we should have understanding about them if you don't understand if you proceed further you might not be able to propose them the appropriate solution suppose they wanted a report daily status report what goes into it you don't know why they want you don't know by when it should be ready don't know we will be using it don't know how can developers develop it but you feel as developers have to develop because i am giving the requirement daily status report what sort of daily status report you haven't inquired you just said they wanted it yes they have noted it down should not be that way understand ask them why do you want this what what it should contain get an understanding okay without that should not proceed you can't if you proceed also nobody can take it forward because developers won't understand what to do with it that's why the best recommended approach for this kind of understanding the needs not only for needs even for uh, illustration of the requirements or whatever it might be whenever you would like to understand what is happening it's always best to follow the consultative approach have you ever visited any consultants doctor health consultant nutritionist or maybe career counselor anybody any such kind of consultants have you visited hello o only doctor only doctor yeah right. you might have consulted a doctor so what would have happened or can you tell me one, one just exam on occasion maybe you were you might not be well you visited doctor then what has happened he asked what the problem is what has happened to you right so i should that happened yep you give all so, the symptoms uh, yeah and he'll come up with a solution he'll propose you, he'll prescribe some medicine so diagnosis yes yeah. yeah, serious questions to understand what is happening with you and he'll make recommend it won't be like you go and wish him Hey, uh, good evening, doctor. I'm suffering from this. Hey, take this medicine. Can't be that way. So, consultative approach. You keep on asking the questions in such a way that you'll uh, you'll come to know about the existing situation, what is happening. Thereby, you can understand the problem. You can reach to the roots of the problem. Finally, you can recommend solution. Recommending solution is the next part of it. We are trying to understand the problem. For that, we are taking the consultative approach, asking the relevant questions. to understand the problem better how to ask those questions 
have we learned something about asking questions yeah okay. how can i ask the questions there like uh, what has the from how many days it has happened so what was all you have done in previous days now what what is the basis for it what we have learned we have learned about one technique right framework yeah concept what is that five things so for why where what that one is bscm B needs and if you like to sound little bit professional so you can go yeah. with bsc right yes bccm will be your basis for asking the questions relevant questions now you keep it as a checklist have you understood about context have you understood about the stakeholders have you understood about the need everything thereby you get complete questions for that particular problem or maybe opportunity okay. that's how you'll come to know the big picture later you can decide what to do with it okay so typical opening questions could, could be something like can you explain what are you doing on daily basis can you explain me in detail how exactly these things take place can you help me in understanding these kind of activities so these can be some of the typical questions that we can start with later you can use bscm approach to get all the questions thereby keep on asking questions get all the information thereby you'll be clear with what exactly is happening and later you can decide easily what can be done So yes. consultative approach is the best approach here. Now, in order to make it effective and also to you to become a good business analyst, to better business analyst, to best business analyst, you should have empathy towards your stakeholders. What is empathy? What is empathy? Meaning of empathy? to understand or to know about something curious to know about something anyway it's like uh, keeping the keeping your foot in the opposite person shoe and feeling for them if i'm saying i'm very i'm suffering you should be able to sense that suffering how much suffering it might be and right? feeling the feelings of others okay like keep the keep foot in your the, their shoe and realize how it might be how troublesome it might be right there's a typical empathy you should have that empathy so that you can realize what sort of uh, issue or what sort of what intense intensity that problem has got in it for example you visited doctor doctor would have seen thousands of patients when by then but when you go there if he says hey come and take this medicine and go home Will you be happy? Will you be comfortable? No. What do you expect there? I need to know what happened. That's fine. Still, I'm talking about the way doctor has treated you. He'll say, "Fine, you are suffering with this particular problem. Take this medicine and go home." Will that be the convincing way for you? Will you be comfortable? With the treatment no so what we feel is even though doctor would have seen thousands of patients when we go there we would like him to treat us as if it's the highest important thing for him when we say i'm suffering a lot doctor and you also expect the same feeling from him oh is it so okay let me check it out if he says hey well, that's fine take it is what is there whether it's cold you might have got cold you'll not be happy right you'll say doctor is very rude man i can't understand what my feelings i'm suffering a lot he's taking it very easily right that's what empathy is about you have to show that if doctor shows that empathy immediately will say that doctor is very good very sensible he understands the problem anyway he understands the problem only thing is he's exhibiting that empathy to you as a doctor he will easily understand what the problem is that's not the issue 
is showing that empathy thereby he can get into that particular intensity level or how much suffering you might be having thereby you can also feel comfortable you will also be opening up more if not there will not be relevancy there will not be any that kind of gelling between you and doctor sometimes treatment might go wrong you might not feel comfortable you might not share or that person might diagnose it differently right so that's how it is so we always expect that doctor should treat us as if it's the first time he's seeing this is the first case he's treating us because for us that is the biggest challenge at that moment same happens with business you might have gained lot of experience as a ba you might have seen multiple troubles multiple cases similar lines but whenever you are interacting with the stakeholder he expects you to show the empathy thereby you can also be appropriate they can also feel comfortable so empathy is mandatory for your consultative approach similarly having genuine interest in helping your stakeholders is also equally important you should have genuine interest in helping the stakeholders suppose one of your family member closest family member is not well seriously ill and some unknown person is also sick or ill is also not well now you took your family member to one particular particular hospital then you realized that facility or doctor is not available this uh, member is suffering a lot now what will be doing what will you do if one hospital doesn't have proper equipment or doctor is unavailable then what, what will you do available hospital yeah you might try to book for next appointment if suffering is too much you might look for an alternative hospital you rush there you check there you take the person there if still you feel that's not also sufficient you might take them to some other person some other hospital you keep on doing that until that person gets proper treatment and he feels relieved will you be doing same thing with a unknown person you might say go there if he says no doctor is not available you might say yeah then try there you will not be so worried about it difference is this is your person your family member you are feeling that this is my person you want to help him at any cost whereas there in other case might not be need not be right if you have the intention of helping people genuinely automatically your efforts will vary the level of efforts the level of curiosity that you have in you the understanding that you would like to gain everything will vary is that right yeah that's why you should have genuine interest in helping the stakeholders if you have that automatically you will not miss out on small details to big details you will be very much interested in helping them by bringing all available options different solutions you will explore <clears throat> you will dig out in and out of everything thereby you can propose more appropriate solutions for them this will definitely take you from being a business analyst to good business analyst to better to best i believe we do have those attitudes already with us those kind of characteristics with us empathy and helping people genuine interest in helping people only thing required is just work on little bit more and help the stakeholders with that your, your quality of work will be output will be very much impressive and you can succeed easily point of success for this role would be to get a remark for, to get a comment or appreciation from the business or at least you should be able to realize that because of your efforts business is performing in a better way might not be 100% maybe a small portion but whatever your efforts you have kept they are actually helping them once you realize that that's when you can say as a business analyst you have succeeded there promotions increments better opportunities all those are all secondary role wise this is what the success factor would be for you so you have to decide that this is what i'm going to deliver to the business and i would like to hear from them that 
they are actually feeling better because of my efforts anyway you are keeping efforts do it properly so that they can also be happy all right that's how your approach should be that's when you can create the difference otherwise you become one more business analyst that's not the right thing to do it won't help anyone all right any questions so far all right now we have got needs we have understood the needs and we would like to develop a software assume that for their needs we would like to propose a software if i want to propose a software i have to have the requirements with me if i want to ask my team to develop the requirements i should provide details to them that means if first sprint has to commence first sprint has to commence then i have to keep the things ready before first sprint correct if you want to travel tomorrow today should get ready at least should you would have completed your planning you should be ready so that tomorrow morning you can start your journey is that right yeah so if you are taking travel as 10 days trip day 1 day 2 day 3 all these are all related to travel but there is another day which is also related to travel that is one day before your trip that is zero th day of the trip one day before your trip you would have completed your preparation without that you can't start your day 1 of your journey such kind of a sprint here such kind of sprint is known as sprint zero where there will be certain kind of preparatory work done by the team team here is you business and product owner or business analyst so product owner typically forms the team creates the vision for the product that is what is the purpose of the product and creates initial product backlog and also creates road map for the initial release for this release first for the first release which are all the features i would like to consider in the application that will also be decided by the product owner so team formation creating the vision creating the initial product backlog and road map for the initial release all these are all the activities that will be performed in one sprint for first sprint called as zero it sprint or sprint zero or zero it attraction all are same this is a kind of preparatory sprint this is the only sprint where there are there is no development activity taking place it's only preparatory work once you have kept all the stories ready then you can go for your first sprint from then onwards it continues like that okay are you clear with zero sprint uh, sprint zero yeah yeah this is the sprint that takes place before first sprint where you do preparatory work such as forming the team creating the vision creating the backlog and also creating the road map for the first release now going forward what are we supposed to do as a ba we are supposed to get all the requirements for various sprints this requirements they will be at three levels requirements and related activities few are product level activities few are release level few are iteration level that is at sprint level product level we have to define the vision as we have just discussed about having it in sprint zero define the vision and also define the user roles building the prioritized backlog and building the product road map right these are all the activities that we need to do for a product that means what are all the what is the purpose of the product who is going to use the application who are all going to use the application which are all the features we would like to have with priority and by when we would like to release for example one year within this year by when we would like to release which functionalities for a product 
once we have decided these are all the features we are going to release then we would like to plan for a release at release level we would like to go with themes what is that theme and all we'll learn later for now remember that the themes will be there for releases and select the stories that can be considered for development once we have selected the stories for release then we are supposed to plan for the sprint we need to provide the stories for team to plan their activities for the sprint so we need to analyze the stories add all the details add acceptance criteria and share with the team get the feedback update your stories as required thereby stories will be ready we call them we can say we have prepared the stories and kept ready for upcoming sprint so in jira sprint we have created stories for our first sprint in first sprint we are supposed to create stories for second sprint like that you have to create keep on creating the stories and adding the details one sprint before the next sprint thereby the stories can be consumed in upcoming sprint so in this way our work will be a continual activity we are not talking about developing and deployment and all we are talking only about keeping the stories ready preparing the stories for different sprints this is what our entire responsibility will be as a part of scrum team being we being bas rpo right let us try to understand something about this in little bit detail in illustrative manner Can you see that cell? Yes, sir. Yeah. Mohammad, Paro, Sakib, are you able to follow, guys? Yeah. 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 Now, let's try to understand what are all the activities we need to do. So, first of all, we'll have product backlog. It will have different user stories prioritized based on the priority. Let's assume we have prioritized and then we have got stories something like this. User story one, user story two, something like this. We have identified many stories. Right? It's like a burger that we eat. Can you tell me, will you be swallowing the burger? One attempt, unless you have some special abilities. Will you be swallowing the burger directly? How you eat? No, we have to bite it first and then eat. You have to bite it and eat it. Correct. So what we do? We'll bite it. Great. Different bites. <clears throat> now you have taken a bite. Now will you swallow? We'll chew it. Correct. We'll chew it. So this burger is our product backlog. These bites are our releases. This chewing is about our sprints. Got it? There might be hundreds of functionalities to be developed for a product. We can't develop them entirely because it takes a lot of time. And what we do, we'll plan for shorter time scales to release the product in different multiple chunks. In order to do that, we can't develop them everything together in two to four weeks of duration. So we'd like to develop them in multiple sprints. You have your burger, take the bites, which would that to swallow. Swallowing is nothing but handing over the application to business deployment. So what we do, what we need to do, first we have to take our bites, that is, we have to plan for the release. For example, 
let us say we would like to release 10 functionalities 10 user stories for first release all right first you have to plan for a release then you need to consider which stories can be developed in first sprint which stories can go to second sprint just planning you'd like to take it like this if you complete these two sprints your release will be over now our responsibility is to prepare these stories so we have decided that these are all the stories that are going to be the part of this release sprint one has to commence so what we need to do is we have to prepare the stories for first sprint when we prepare them we prepare one sprint before that that's what your sprint zero is so in sprint zero you prepare all your stories so that those stories can be consumed in sprint one and developed suppose let, let us indicate this one as in progress when sprint one is going on as we have done in sprint zero we have prepared stories for sprint one similarly we need to prepare all these stories in sprint two sprint one we need to prepare the stories in sprint one so that the same can be consumed in sprint two what happens here you keep all the stories ready with all the details once sprint to one gets over that is half of your release is over then second sprint needs to be commenced so you have all these stories available for the second sprint now this will be in progress this is in progress now so what we would like to do is in progress now our release is also over with this time that is one byte is over you have chew you are chewing still you are chewing so what you do by that time you would like to decide which stories can be considered for next release you might again make your prepare another byte because you are going to swallow this now now this print is over that is Sorry, when this print is in progress, what we would like to do is we would like to prepare stories for upcoming sprint. Something like this, 11 to 15. This print count will continue. It will keep on incrementing. So this is your release one. This might be, for example, can be released to another two sprints. When sprint 2 is going on, you are supposed to prepare stories for sprint 3. That might belong to another release. Now your sprint is over. That means that this release is also complete. Then you'll have a UAT, user acceptance testing. That we'll discuss in detail later on. So you'll have UAT towards end of the release. And then again, when sprint 3 is going on, that is when sprint 3 is in progress, what are we supposed to do? to prepare stories for which sprint four four those stories can be something like this 14 to 20 16 to 20 you prepare them once sprint the gets over then those 16 to 20 will be consumed in upcoming sprint that is sprint four now half of our release is over now second half is in progress that means again we are chewing to swallow so second byte is also getting completed so we would like to go with third byte just i'm taking very simple easy to understand example here
Now what should happen? What is the next step to be done? Currently, sprint four is in progress. So what are we supposed to do here? Hello, Mohammed. Sorry, I missed this part. <laughs> My headphone was not working at that time. Sorry. All right. What are we supposed to do now? Sprint four is in progress. So what are we supposed to do further? Para? Oh, we are supposed to Yep. Second. Hello, can you hear me? Second. Voice is not audible. Uh, can you hear me now? Yes. So we're gonna prepare for release uh, three. Uh, yep. Yeah, for U US 21 to US uh, 25. Right. Yeah. All right, we prepare the stories for sprint five. That is a release three. Now I think you people are clear with what we need to do, right? Yes. This is what it is. These are all the activities we need to do. Product level, release level, and then sprint level. All right. Any questions? No, thank you. All right. Sheshank, any questions? Sir, I'm good. All right. Now, roadmap, how it looks like. Let me just present you this. So this is how it would be. Something like different releases or two teams here. There are two teams, Ninjas and Vikings. We've got different releases. First releases of only having just one, one sprint. 15 to 19 releases, they have got two sprints each. This is a tentative schedule in a way. So we'll try to understand what are all the features that can be expected. Again, these these might undergo changes because of the changing preferences of the business. We should be able to accommodate those change. Right? Any questions for that? No. All right. Now comes our vision. Product vision, it's something like ambition or aim of life. In general, people would have asked you what you would like to become in life. We would have told something. Don't worry what we are currently. We might have told I want to become scientist, maybe doctor or maybe engineer, astronaut, whatever it might be. Intention of asking that question and also following upon that one to some extent is to set a direction for our career. Where we would like to go, what we need to study, what should be our path. If you would like to become doctor, you might have to take that approach, that path, that, those courses. If you would like to become scientist, you are supposed to take those courses. Thereby, you can reach the goal. For a product, such kind of ambition is nothing but vision. There is a template for vision, recommended template. For target customers who needs to be solved, some of the needs. The product, the name of the product is a product belonging to a particular category that benefits unique selling proportions, etc. Unlike competitors, our product has got these features. Suppose, this is a vision statement from one of the 
companies one of the products kindly go through it now let's try to discuss something about this suppose somebody has brought this as a proposal to you this is our vision vision statement we request you to look into this and invest in this product development you are investor now you would like to understand by this statement will this be kind of a option for you to consider for investment or not why why do you think you want to invest why do you think you don't want to invest you can even present both the versions you know, why you want to invest why you don't want to invest go through this statement carefully and let me know would you like to invest money yes or no on why All right. Who wants to go first? Would you like to invest? Why? If you don't want to invest, why? Who want to go first? Don't worry about being right or wrong here. It's only your perception, your own view. Nothing to judge. Which is right, which is wrong. Okay. Feel free and participate. Who want to go first? Omar? Yeah, please go ahead. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I was a little absent. If you don't focus on the training, it won't be fruitful for you. Please, guys. Yes, sorry about that, man. So, uh, just so uh, a question like uh, any kind of product that you want to invest in. <laughs> Please come again. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, so I just wanted to know, like, uh, any kind of product we wanted to invest. Is that you? Is that you wanted to hear from us? Are you able to see screen? The screen? Yeah. Yeah. I'm talking about that product. Uh, on the screen. Product. Have you understood what is that statement is about? No, I'm not going to invest on that product. Why? Because there is so many uh, things already on the market. Okay. That's why I don't want to invest. Fine. So, keep. I'm talking about the product which is presented here for business email users who want to better manage the increasing number of messages they receive when out of office. This is the kind of mobile email solution that provides real-time link to desktop for email sending the important okay. message. This, uh... this is the product. Okay, okay, okay. I got it. Would you like to invest in this product is the question. Yes or no, why? You can even present both versions. If you'd like to invest, why? If you don't want to invest, why? Both can also be presented. Only thought process, how we think. Are we able to understand from this statement to some extent or not? The intention of doing this exercise. Okay. 
you can think meanwhile we'll just check with others for so uh so if i i would like to invest if this particular product would provide some uh, customization or some extra feature um, or is more more cost efficient or has more security than the other things that are already available in market or if i feel that it is not providing me with anything extra than what is already available then maybe not i know based on this statement what do you think all what you mentioned that thing is making me uh like, if, if all these things are available then yes maybe i would like to invest and check it so out but from this statement can you identify such kind of things you have to look into the statement no that simple statement is not it's not giving those details but can you get an understanding about what it is going to deliver what sort of product it is how it's going to help someone uh, yes i can understand what it is going to do and it yeah. has also claimed that it's going to be secure and always connected and wearable but uh, we need to verify if all those features are really available or is it is it's helping us in some way oh, that's what they would like to develop that's a vision right we won't have product currently i'm saying i would like to start this kind of a business will you be interested in investment you can't judge now at this point but based on whatever facts they have presented would you like to go for it or not is what you can decide um yeah maybe See, tomorrow i would like to bring this product i can't prove today right so at high level will you be able to come to a conclusion whether you want to invest or not based on the statement if so what are, what is that which is motivating you to invest or which is not encouraging you to invest you can't verify the facts here because this is a vision statement i would like to achieve this so tomorrow i'll be achieving i can't prove it today so i'm asking you will you be partnering with me to develop this okay. kind of a product? then based on this presentation what i have given you the vision statement what is your understanding would you like to go for it or not can are you able to understand at high level what is this product is about and making a coming to a conclusion okay let us take a try or no not to involve here are you able to realize that is the question got it right you should get some idea okay this is what the product is about looks promising no no it won't look promising as mama said there are many other products this is a very simple one i don't want to invest how are you able to understand that because that has been mentioned here right yes so intention of doing this exercise is to understand to realize that whether that vision statement is giving us some idea as an investor if i talk about you are a stakeholder investor is a stakeholder similarly there is a developer developer might think from development perspective okay this solution has always needs always to be connected with the mail exchange mail server there is a possibility of data loss security threats i need to consider all of them deployment person might understand okay we need a firewall also in between probably antivirus right they can understand those things it's not like what is that product we don't know we don't even know what to develop here it's not that way right shashank yes. like i want to invest yep so if we, if this is a vision then uh, i want to invest sir okay very good so this is how it's helping us to get an understanding at high level so that's why we say generally vision statement vision sets high level expectations for the stakeholders and the team everything at high level we too don't know whether they will be bringing the security features 
what level of security what set of algorithms they follow how is it wearable how is it continuously connected we too don't know but it's saying this is how it is going to be but uh, after uh, further vision we can customize it right so that is further vision can be expanded in general we'll yeah. expand the will not change the vision as such will not uh, change the purpose of the product itself we might expand it for example it's meant for business email users later you might want to make it for everyone okay right that can be expanded in general we won't change the vision it's like changing your career path you wanted to become doctor suddenly you won't like to become engineer it won't happen that way in general you want to become doctor but but your specialization might change you wanted to become maybe heart specialist now you might become something else but you'll be still a doctor okay that's how we treat all right that way we can expand the vision further depending on the business requirements business need and market demands all the stuff now by the way anyway we have discussed so much so let me try to give you another option for you to guess which product it is this is a old one of the products which was there in the market can you guys guess so that we can close the session for the day guess game it's like a mobile app uh, which one it is it can be it's like gmail mobile gmail app uh, any other email app okay so the similar lines but it is blackberry uh, that's why it's mentioned here here is a former product vision statement here this is a is the right so this is a blackberry is a mobile email solution that provides real time link to their desktop emails for sending reading and responding to important messages this is what blackberry's vision statement they haven't expanded it so it has become outdated got you any questions then not so far right catch up tomorrow and then continue further right sure thanks for your time. thank you guys thank you thank you so much nice session thank you